am here with Julia Sanchez Bajo, the new cooperative chair at the University of Winnipeg, uh, on the morning of September 27th, 2013, at Montreal Bookstore and Coffee House. So, Claudia, tell us a bit about your new responsibilities at the University of Winnipeg. Hi. Um, as a new chair of cooperative leadership, I'm really excited to be I work with the framework um, established in an agreement between two parties. On the one side, we find the Faculty of Business and Economics, and then on the other, the donors that are cooperatives and credit unions in Manitoba and the provincial government. So what I came to do is to develop a new subject area, and that means developing new courses, um, research, and new activities focusing on cooperatives. And what has your history been of connection to working forms? Well, for example, I worked on a project called the ECG, European Cooperative Groups, um, in which Mondragon from Spain and uh, TTN, which is the largest network of social cooperatives, um, Italy and GGPL, which is a consortium of industrial cooperatives, um, were part of. And uh, we did um, research projects and other activities um, with the European Commission as well. And then I have had visits and exchanges and different types of work uh, with worker corps in Argentina, Brazil, Costa Rica, and uh, other countries and I have taught particularly on worker cooperatives at the University of Kassel in Germany. And throughout all this experience have you come to any conclusions as to potential uh, importance of worker cooperatives to society? Well I believe that uh, first of all uh, there is a personal importance in terms of being a member of a worker co-op because um, as a member in this type of cooperative the person you are much more engaged um, because your life your work is engaged uh, in a worker co-op much more than in a consumer or a user type of cooperative like uh, could be a consumer cooperative for example so that's the first thing um, that I, um, you know, in terms of personal engagement. Uh, and then beyond uh, the individuals in the working club, uh, there is the importance um, in that they show a different way of organizing work and managing work. And then beyond that, um, let's say, further to society, they are giving specific responses, which are good responses, um, as how an enterprise can be managed, as how an enterprise can be organized in terms of participation, democratic governance, uh, control, um, and uh, how it, an enterprise can respond to social and economic needs. What are some of the short, medium, long-term goals that you feel that worker co-ops should aim for over the next few years? So, I just mentioned one uh, that I think is important, and that is to cooperate more among themselves. Because that will make them stronger and more sustainable, and we make their mission, which is actually like creating jobs, uh, and make them sustainable, um, much more important. Uh, and uh, uh, so they will reach their mission in a much better way. Um, so they have to horizontally coordinate and cooperate, which means uh, find uh, an answer to the challenge between autonomy and delegation of some tasks uh, onto a coordinated um, at level can be done in different ways. And 
as a as a compare and contrast, um, how do you feel that the worker co-ops in English Canada compare to potentially French Canada and other countries? Um, again, I would just mention to make it short one point, and I think there is a contrast. First of all, in terms of numbers, so we find hundreds of worker co-ops in the French part of Canada, in Quebec, and then hundreds and thousands in some other countries. And one possible explanation is that they have access, in terms of public policy um, and law, uh, to indivisible reserves. And this is a type of capital that I think uh, strengthens worker crops and uh, makes it easier to get loans, uh, common guarantees, and uh, other types of instruments. Um, so I think that's a point maybe uh, worth, it, worth it more time. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us today, Claire.